whatever the tax amount you'll get that much of amount of tax is supposed to be remitted by you to the government within the prescribed time period section 80 tta allows individual and hgf to claim tax deductions of rupees up to 10000 rupees on the interest earned from savings accounts so person with normal disabilities can claim a maximum deduction of 75000 if you have any normal disabilities okay then you can claim up to 75000 rupees as a deduction under section 80u Hello everyone I'm Arun Kumar lecturer in department of commerce and management Vidyashram First Grade College the Temple of Excellence Mysore Dear students welcome to this new session session number 2 on unit number 5 that is tax deduction at source and advance tax ruling Yes dear students in the previous session with respect to this particular unit we were discussing about the different deductions what we have under section 80c to 80u and we discussed about what is section 80c what is section 80 cc c and what is section 80 cc d and also we discussed about section 80 d and all so in this particular session we continue with the deductions available under section 80 c to 80 u with respect to an individual and huf so now we have under section 80 g so what is this section 80 g and what and all the deductions are available under section 80 g so if you look into that so donation to various charitable trust or donation to various charitable funds and institutions are eligible for deductions under this section of section 80 of the income tax act yes under this section that is under section 80g we are going to give the deductions for the donations made by any individual or by any huf to a particular association or for any charitable trust okay so here under section 80g we will be giving deductions for the donations made by a individual or by a huf so depending on the institution that is depending on the institution or depending on the charitable trust you can get up to 50% or 100% of the amount donated deducted from gross total income yes based on for which institution or for which you know uh, charitable trust or for which association you are giving the donation based on that either 50% of your contribution or 100% of your contribution will be deducted from your gross total income for example you are giving 5000 rupees of donation to a institution based on the nature of the institution based on whether it comes under the 100% deduction or 50% deduction you can take the deduction of this 5000 rupees from your gross total income so what is this gross total income we have already discussed about this topic that is gross total income gross total income is nothing but the total of salary income and house property income and capital gain income business and profession income and also the other sources income so the total of five heads of income that is salary house property capital gain business and profession and other sources if you total this all five okay if you total this all five you will get the total let us say you got total of 780000 okay 780000 is the gross total income from this we are going to deduct the deductions under section 80c to 80u then whatever the balance you will get so from this gross total income in short we will call it as gti gross total income we deduct the deductions okay we deduct the deductions from section 80c to 80u so after giving the deductions from gross total income you will get the balance okay this balance is called as say you had given the deduction of 50000 rupees of deduction so what is the balance from the 780 you are giving the deduction under section 80c to 80u of rupees 50000 the balance of 730000 so this 730 will be your total income or taxable income okay this is how we are going to give the deductions okay from gross total income that is the total of all the five heads of income is called gross total income from that we give deductions under section 80c to 80u whatever the balance you will get after the deduction that is called taxable income that means on that balance income we will be imposing the tax okay in case if you get the balance is less than 5 lakh rupees there is no tax if it is more than 5 lakh rupees yes you can 
calculate the tax and you're supposed to pay the tax, whatever the tax amount you'll get, that much of amount of tax is supposed to be remitted by you to the government within the prescribed time period. So yes, we are discussing about ATG. So here based on to which institution or to which institution or charitable trust you are giving the charity or the donation. So based on that, either you will get 50% or 100% deduction from your gross total income. Next, from 2018, donation eligible for deduction under Section 80G have a limit of 2000 for cash transaction. Yes, if you are giving in check or if you are doing NIFT transaction, okay, okay, if you are giving in check or NIFT transaction, then whatever the amount you are contributing towards the donation, the full amount will be exempted based on 50% or 100%. Okay, if you are giving cash, okay, if you are giving cash, then you can take the exemption up to rupees 2000 but not more than 2000 rupees because some people what they'll do they'll be giving 2000 and they'll be showing that they had given 20000 donation and so that is why if you are giving donation in cash you can take the deduction maximum of 2000 rupees if you are paying in cash if you are paying through online or if you are paying through neft transaction or if you are paying through checks you can pay how much ever you want if you pay 10000 rupees then you can claim 10000 as deduction if you are paying 20,000 rupees, you can take 20,000 as deduction. Next, when claiming this deduction, you should also provide the details of any institution to which you donated. Yes, if you want to claim that deduction, okay, if you want to claim the deduction of donation, which is given to some institutions or charitable trust, at the time of, you know, filing the income tax return, you are supposed to give the details of for which particular institution or to which particular charitable trust you had given the donation. Whether you did the online transaction or the, whether you paid through check or whether you paid them in cash, each and every detail is supposed to be submitted by you in order to claim the deduction of amount under Section 80G. So this is about Section 80G and Section 80G deals with the donation given by individual or HUF to a charitable trust or to a any organizations or to the institutions. Next, moving further, Section 80 GG. So here, Section 80 GG, it deals with, allows you to reduce your tax liability for paying house rent in case you do not get HRA from your employer. So here, Section 80 GG is going to, you know, give the deduction to a particular individual or HUF with respect to house rent paid by a person. Okay, you are working in a company and your company is not providing you HRA. Your company is not providing you HRA. So at that point of time, if you are living in a rented house, if you are paying the rent and if your company is not giving you the rent, at that time of time, whatever the rent paid by you, okay, whatever the rent paid by you for that particular house, that rent can be claimed as deduction under section 80 GG from your gross total income. If the HRA is not provided by your employer. To claim this, you must not own a house in the name of yourself, your spouse, children or member of HEF in the place of employment. For example, you are in Mysore. Okay, you are a resident of Mysore. You went to Bangalore because you got a job in Bangalore. So you are working there in Bangalore, but you don't have your own house in Bangalore. Okay, and your employer is also not providing you HRA, but you are living in a rented house. So at that point of time, whatever the rent you are paying every month, that you can take as a deduction under Section 80 GZ from your gross total income. But if you are in Mysore, for example, and you are also working in Mysore itself, you are also working in Mysore itself, and what you will do, you let out your property, you are let out your own property to someone else, and you are staying in a rented house, and you are claiming the deduction under 80 GG. So at that point of time, deduction is not allowed because where you are working in that place, if you have your own house or if you have the house in your spouse name or in children name, then section 80 GG is not applicable. So that is what the statement says. So you must also live in a rented accommodation and pay regular rent. That means you should be in a rented house and you should pay the rent regularly on monthly basis for whatever the duration you are going to stay in that particular house. You can claim the least of the following amount as deduction. Yes, that means 
we have some conditions to claim the rent paid. So in these three, the least amount will be considered as the rent paid by the employee and that will be given as deduction under section 80 GG from gross total income. So what is the three items we have? The first one is rupees 5000 rupees per month or rent paid over 10% of income or 25% of your total income. In these three, whichever is whichever is less. In short, we call it as WEL, whichever is less. So in these three, the least amount will be taken as the deduction under section 80 GG. The first one is 5000 rupees per month for one year, how much you will get? You will get 60,000 or rent paid over 10% of income. Okay. Next, 25% of your total income. In these three, we calculate the values. In those three values, whichever the least value you will get, that least value will be considered as rent paid and you can claim that rent paid as the deduction under section 80 GG from gross total income. So this is what section 80 GG says that is about the deduction with respect to rent paid by the employee in a if he is living in a rented property. So next one is section 80 TTA and section 80 TTB. So here section 80 TTA allows individual and HUF to claim tax deductions of rupees up to 10,000 rupees on the interest earned from savings accounts. Yes, if you have savings account, okay, if you have savings bank account with any bank and if you are earning the interest on that savings, on the deposits in the savings banks, so in that up to 10,000 rupees you can claim as deduction, up to 10,000 rupees of interest you can claim as deduction under section 80 TTA. The accounts can be opened at a bank or a post office. Moreover, taxpayers need to be below 60 years of age to claim this. Yes, to claim this deduction under section 80 TTA with respect to, you know, uh, interest earned up to rupees 10,000 rupees. The particular assessee should be in the age group of, below the age group of 60 years. And senior citizen can claim tax deduction of rupees 50,000. Yes, but... Here, for the people who are in the age group of less than 60 years, they can claim the interest earned as a deduction under section 80 TTA up to rupees 10,000. If they are senior citizens, they will get the deductions up to rupees 50,000 on the interest income from deposit in bank or post office under section 80 TTB. So, section 80 TTA is applicable to the people who are belongs to the age group of less than 60 years. They can claim of 10,000 rupees up to 10,000 rupees as deduction. Next, if they are senior citizens, then they belong to section 80 TTB and they can claim the interest earned up to rupees 50,000 for deduction purpose under section 80 TTB. So it allows tax benefits for interest income from various accounts such as savings bank account and fixed deposit account. So here, if you are investing in any bank's savings account or in fixed deposit account and if you are earning interest, so up to certain level of interest, up to certain amount earned as interest, that interest can be claimed that as deduction from your gross total income under section 80 TTA and TTB. So this is what section 80 TTA and TTB says. Moving further, section 80U. This subsection under section 80 of the Income Tax Act allows Resident taxpayers with disability to claim tax deductions. Yes, if any taxpayer, if any SSC is a resident of India and if he is disabled, okay, if he is disabled, that person is disabled, so for that purpose he can claim the deductions. So to claim this, such individual need a person with a disability certification from relevant medical authorities. Yes, to claim this disabilities deductions, you should have to have to obtain a particular certificate called person with disability. So some of the conditions that qualify under section 80U are ostracism and cerebral palsy. So if they are suffering from these kind of disabilities, they can claim under this particular section that is section 80U. So person with normal disabilities can claim a maximum deduction of 75,000. If you have any normal disabilities, okay, then you can claim up to 75,000 rupees as a deduction under section 80U. And while with those with severe disabilities can get deduction up to rupees 
one lakh twenty five thousand. So it's based on what and all the disabilities and how they'll be considering it. It has a normal disability or severe disability. It's up to the authority. So based on that, based on how they are going to decide, you can claim the deductions of rupees seventy five thousand or rupees one lakh twenty five thousand. That is the maximum amount. So here, this section eighty U is for the person who is with disability who is a resident of India. He can go and claim this deduction. This is about eighty U. Now we summarize all the sections we discussed so far, so that easily you'll get to know what and all the sections we discussed. The first one, section eighty C, it is about against expenses like tuition fees of your children, repayment of loan, loan principal, etc., and investment like ELSS, PPF, NSC. LIC, we will be investing in those things that comes under section 80C, and the maximum allowable amount is rupees one lakh fifty thousand. Next one, section 80CCC. So we take the deduction under section 80CC for payment made towards the annuity pension plan, whether it's by the private or under the government, and the maximum limit is rupees one lakh. Right. Next one, section 80CCD. So this deduction is available against Any amount paid towards pension scheme of central government, okay? Section 80 CC is CCC is for whether it's private or government, but section 80 CCD can be claimed against the pension scheme of central government, and the maximum deduction is one lakh fifty thousand. And section 80 CCF for investment in infrastructure bonds, maximum deduction is rupees twenty thousand. Got it? Next, section 80 D. Section 80D, it's on the premium paid for health insurance policies. Section 80D can be claimed against the health insurance premiums paid by SSE up to rupees one lakh. Next, Section 80DD, you can claim Section 80DD against the expenses incurred for taking care of disabled dependent relative, and the maximum amount you can claim is one lakh twenty-five thousand. And Section 80DDB. It is on the expenses made for specific diseases, and the maximum limit you can claim is rupees one lakh. And next, section eighty e for payment towards education loan. For payment towards education loan, no maximum limit. So for this, no maximum limit. So first eight years from the date of you know starting the date from the date of you know interest payment or the full payment towards the loan, whichever is first. Next section 80G, it is on donation to various charitable trust and the institution, and for this 50% or 100% of the amount donated based on what kind of for what kind of institution you are donating. Next section 80GG against house rent allowances for an individual or for a HUF. So the maximum amount is rupees 5000 per month, and we have also another two conditions in those three, whichever is the least amount. Next section. 80 TTA against interest earned from savings bank account, and here the maximum is 10,000. Section 80 TT B again, it is also interest earned from deposits for senior citizens, and the maximum amount is how much? Rupees 50,000. Next section 80 U, it is all about the deduction available for taxpayers with disabilities, and the maximum amount they can claim is rupees 1 lakh 25,000. 1 lakh 25,000. So these are the deductions which are available for individuals as well as for the HUFs. So other than individual and HUF, nobody can claim the deduction under Section 80C to 80U in this particular sections what we discussed. Okay. So with this, I am going to wind up this session. I'll come up with few more new topics with this respect to this particular topic. Until then, thank you all. Have a nice day. Namaste.